Hello everyone, I'm Jim Longworth and welcome to another edition of Triad Today. Coming up later on, our infamous roundtable gets together. We'll see what kind of controversies they stir up. But between now and then, some great guests and information coming your way. We will have a discussion about a healthy competition between two major industries in our area. But it's not that they're fighting with each other. It's a healthy competition to help us with our health. We'll tell you all about that in a little bit. We'll have a visit with some Girl Scouts. It's cookie season and much more. They're learning a lot there. And we'll tell you about some activities that are going on at UNCG to help promote diversity, that and much more. But first we turn our attention to something called the Black Philanthropy Initiative. I'm holding up a magazine, we'll get a close up uh, of it as well. Uh, this is the uh, Black Business Inc. magazine. And then as I turn the page on the inside, there's an article by David Daggett. There's a great article uh, on here which will feature our guests uh, with this. And we're going to find out all about this initiative right now. On my right, David Daggett, an attorney with Daggett Shuler. Next to him, a guest that he and uh, Griff had brought along, who's also <laughs> part of the firm, Tyler Bwari. And uh, Tyler is also involved very closely with the Black Philanthropy Initiative. And of course, Griff Shuler is with us. Thanks for being here, guys. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Thank you, Jim. Uh, David, very quickly, tell us a little something about Tyler, because I've never had him on the show before. Well, Tyler's terrific. Uh, I think he's the best young lawyer in the state, and so proud to have him in our law firm. And can I tell a real quick story? Yeah. Okay, so a law professor who's a friend of mine says, I want you to meet this kid just to talk to him about the practice of law. Not an interview or anything else. He comes to my office. He sits in the chair. He's there about 10 seconds. I said, don't you move. I go to get Griff and I said, you got to meet this guy. We're not going to let go of him. Wow. That was during his second year of law school. He worked for a second year of law school, a third year of law school, and now his fourth year as a lawyer with our firm. Gosh. And I will not let him leave. Wow. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, that, we could do a whole segment on that. Uh, Tyler, look, uh, this initiative, uh, what is it, very quickly? Um, the Black Philanthropy Initiative is an organization that was established in 2007 under the Winston-Salem Foundation. Um, essentially, what we do is we provide grants to um, local nonprofits who are focusing um, programs in the areas of education, uh, financial literacy, and uh, parental and, um, and life in, skills training. And they're in the area, they're local folks. Correct, right. Winston-Salem. Now David, how important is it for grant monies like this from community leaders to help local organizations? Well, it's very, very important. And you, we know because it's the Winston-Salem Foundation, one of the most credible organizations around, right. that it's a credible organization. And having a young person like this in the leadership of an organization like that, that, that proves that we're going to have a positive community right. in the future. Absolutely. It ensures our future. <clears throat> yeah, now Griff, of course, everybody looks young to me, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> Griff, uh, Griff, it seems like that your firm, you and David and the staff and everybody, are always getting involved in things to help the community. And I'm wondering why you encourage people to do all that. Uh, I mean, you, there's so many things you're into, and especially encouraging a guy. You don't have to encourage Tyler that much, but right. to be involved. Tell me about some of the ways that you do that and what your philosophy is. Well, for, first of all, Jim, uh, honestly, it's an extension of what we do every day. Um, so what we do every day is, is help people uh, that are disabled uh, or injured. And so um, our community involvement in helping people in the community is very much an extension of what we feel like we do every, every day helping folks. Um, I think one of the things that's very, very important to David and me that uh, Tyler is, uh, has heard many times and, and in trying to get the attorneys focusing on making a distinctive impact um, not only for our clients, but in the community and around the world. And so uh, Tyler uh, very much took that to heart. He's gotten involved in the community and trying to make a distinctive impact, not just for one-on-one -on -one with our clients, but a distinctive impact in the community around us. And we think that's really, really important. Tyler, why did you want to get involved in this? Because there's so many things. I know the three of you are very busy with business anyway and in helping people. Uh, in your work. I mean, by definition, you're helping people. So this takes extra time. That takes extra effort. Why did you get involved? Sure. Um, I studied finance when I was an undergrad. Um, I had a mentor who taught me all about BPI. Um, when I heard that financial literacy was a part of the program, um, I was more than, you know, excited to get involved with, with the organization. Um, and we've done a lot of great things. I, this, in the last couple of years, one of the things that we did was we had uh, Grand Mercy Research Group come in to help us target 
um, our grant dollars and, and uh, to really focus on the issues that the black community needs uh, here in Forsyth and winston -Salem. Really put it where they need yeah. to go. I want to put up on screen before we lose uh, time. There's several ways you can find out more information about this. One is to go to the Winston-Salem Foundation website, which is up on screen for the radio audience, wsfoundation.org. Also, Facebook, you can get to the BPI of Winston-Salem of WS up there. Twitter, you see that on screen, Twitter at BPI of WS. And please check out Daggett Schuler Law www.daggettshulerlaw.com and get this uh, issue of Black Business Inc. and read the article. This is great stuff. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Thanks, Tyler. To Tyler. Yeah, That's right. Young Tyler, we call him. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Today, and uh, always glad when we can have some uh, folks over from UNCG, my alma mater, but I always say they don't claim me. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe Gus will. On my right, I want you to meet this fellow. He's a first-time visitor to the show. Gus Pena is director of the Office of Intercultural Engagement at UNCG. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Jim. Good Thank to you. see you. Uh, Gus, first tell us uh, what you do and what the office provides when I said intercultural engagement. What, tell us about that. Sure. Well, so the team uh, that I work in, uh, we provide all of UNCG students with opportunities to explore our interconnected identities. We all have culture. And it's important for us to do that work together. So we offer a variety of programs and on-campus events that help our students um, figure out what makes us individuals and how we can be a community together. Well, that's neat. And uh, one of the things, uh, by the time, of course, the show airs on Saturday and Sunday, you will have had the daughter of Malcolm X speak. Now, was that an MLK thing, or how did that go? That's right. So uh, it's our annual MLK celebration. And each year, our goal is to bring a noted speaker to our campus. And so this year, we've got Ilyasa Shabazz, who, as you mentioned, is Malcolm X and right. daughter, doc, Dr. Betty Shabazz's daughter. Right. And th that's the kind of caliber of, of speaker that you have, too. I just think that's great. Now, what I want to do is sort of a drill, as it were. I'm going to run down some, some uh, events and types of things that go on through the auspices of your office. And just tell me a little bit about these. I want to understand more about it. There's something that you sent me in an email called Land Acknowledgement Dedication. What's that about? Right, sure. So we have a Native American Student Association at UNCG, and they're a very active group. One of the things that we've worked with them on is on acknowledging the indigenous folks that occupied the land that UNCG, for example, currently stands on. Right. And so this past semester, we worked with that group to, to place a plaque in our Intercultural Resource Center that would be a reminder for all current and future visitors and part Spartans of the indigenous folks that have lived on uh, UNCG's lands. You have Spartans in Dialogue, and you have something called Community with U-N-I-T-Y emphasized there, Dialogue Series. What are these, very quickly, what are the Dialogue Series about? Sure. So there are opportunities for our students to have meaningful and develop meaningful relationships across difference. Students can sign up through our Spartans in Dialogue program to be placed in groups that will meet for five weeks in a row. And these folks will get to know each other, and they come from different backgrounds. And they leave, hopefully, with meaningful relationships with folks that they're not like Community dialogues are very similar. Heritage celebrations, what's that about? So UNCG is a very diverse campus, as you know, and so a lot of our intercultural, multicultural student groups are empowered to help us put on programming that celebrate the heritages that are present at UNC Greensboro. Everybody getting involved. Now, what about any big events coming up this spring we want to plug? Absolutely. So the community is always welcome to events at UNCG. Two of the ones that I would highlight would be our Native American Student Association Powwa, which will be on March the 16th. And then a few weeks later, the International Festival uh, is occurring on April the 6th. So those are two great opportunities to come onto campus and explore diversity together. April 6th for the International uh, Day. Now is that where, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, will there be lots of different international foods and cultures represented? Is you that where that- You can count on it, exactly. And that's for the, open to the community? Open to the public. But on campus? Correct. Okay. Well, yeah, uh, we'll try to plug that as it gets closer to the date, but that, that one's April 6th, but I think we'll bring a lot of people, a lot of people out there. Uh, wh why do you like heading up this office? Why do you like doing your job? Well, so it's, it's both uh, really fulfilling to see students find themselves regardless of where they're coming from, and it's also personal as a student who uh, was on a cam campus recently, and it was really helpful to have folks around me, staff and other students, that welcomed me. Yeah, and you said before we, we rolled tape on this today, you told me you're from Nicaragua. That's right. Have family all over the area, so you can identify with where folks are when they come in and maybe want to discover other cultures and feel comfortable you know, where they are and what they're doing. 
If you feel like you belong, you're more successful. That's just great. Up on screen, a couple things. www.intercultural.uncg.edu backslash programs will get you right to the uh, types of things we were talking about with Gus. And then the general website, of course, uncg.edu. And I'll say it one more time for the radio listening audience, www.intercultural.uncg.edu backslash programs. Please check that out. Gus, I really appreciate what you're doing for everybody on campus. Sure. Thank you, Jim. And for the community. Great. And I hope people will really go to the websites and take advantage of uh, seeing these events. We'll be right back after this. Try today, and I have an exciting threesome with me, and they're in some sort of competition. I want to find out about it, but first let's introduce them to you. On my right, our good friend David Mounts, Chairman and CEO of Inmar. He brought along two special guests with him. In the middle, Steve Reeder, first-time guest here at Try It Today, Executive Vice President and Benefits Manager at BB&T. And Tom Martin comes over along with, uh, from NMAR as Associate Director of Digital Solutions. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Good to see Thank you, Jim. You. Uh, David, I'm going to start with you. I know that when you and I have had discussions, you've always been big on employee wellness. You've been big on supporting employees yes. toward that goal. But then I get this weird email saying something like, David and NMAR and BB&T are in some kind of a health competition and I want to know what that's called and what that's all about. Great. So, you know, we have talked in the past about the fact that food is medicine. Uh, and the reality is that um, even though I think um, awareness around that is growing, it's not always easy to make that, that type of change. And so we've been very interested in the intersection of using technology to make that change easier. And frankly, to make it more fun, because uh, you know it needs to be fun. It, it's a challenging enough as it is, and so we have come up with um, a challenge between Inmar and BB&T, where we are using Inmar's Healthy Basket app, which basically scores your purchases and tells you whether the things you're buying and that you're bringing into your house are going to help you be healthy or not. Right. And that's the big place to start, because if you don't bring anything but good stuff in, it's a lot well, easier well, exactly. to stay stay on top of it. And, and, and Tom, let me ask you, when David said, so we make sure everybody understands this, when he said health E basket, that's E, like a little a health E, what, what does it mean E? What is this health E basket? Yeah, definitely, it's a, it's, we talk, it's a digital nutrition program, so the E is for really electronic, uh, kind of in that uh, digital space. Right, so it's an app, I guess. Now in my world, David knows I'm, not, I'm technologically stupid and David struggles with being my friend because of that. But, but now, can anyone get this health E basket app? Uh, yeah, so uh, Healthy Basket is available for employers to purchase for their employees, uh, or it's available for other organizations to be able to provide it to their members. And we're happy to compete with BB&T on this. Steve, why is this uh, competition and what it represents so important to you and to BB&T? Well, the product's important because we've had wellness programs in place at BB&T for over 30 years. And so we're always challenging our associates to make better decisions about their health. One of the things that we found is they have a hard time, you know, once they know they have a goal, changing their eating habits, they don't know how to take the next step. And so this is a product that really helps them make better decisions, as David said, in the grocery store, uh, knowing what's a good product to buy, what's not a good product to buy, what's healthier for them. And we really think that'll help them make behavior changes. As you can sort of count, uh, use the, the app to, to count the calories and the sugar content and stuff, right? Am I making that up? Or well, is that it's, yeah, it's really an opportunity to say, well, I was going to buy this product or this product. I've got two similar products. Which one's healthier? Right. Which one's better for me, has higher fiber, but, less sugar? Right, because in the past, we might do that on pricing but never exactly. doing it to look after that's our right. bodies. That's right. Which, I think that's it's a different Steve. comparison. Now, now, uh, Steve, how's this competition going to work? I heard through the grapevine there's some kind of a thing where between you and David, between BB&T and Enmar, the loser is going to make some contribution to someone. What is that? Yeah, we've got two things going on. One is that we've agreed that, you know, bb &T, part of bb &T's mission is to make the world a better place to be. And we do that by supporting our communities. And so we've agreed that uh, whoever loses uh, will make a $5,000 contribution to the United Way wow. on behalf of the other company. Isn't that something? Well, David, I want to wrap up with you, though, because it's seriously, though, in a competition like this, everybody's going to win, right? Everyone is going to win. And, and so for the uh, first three months of the year, we'll be summing up all the baskets of BB&T and all the baskets of Inmar, and we'll see which institution was able to accomplish the healthiest choices, and uh, and the winner is going to be uh, each of us as individuals, the companies, United Way, and then uh, as a last uh, element, 
uh, either I or Bob Johnson, uh, who uh, is a senior leader at right. bb and will be cooking dinner for the other, a healthy wow. dinner for the other's family. Man, I guess the only thing that could skew this would be like if Tom went to one of the grocery stores with somebody from bb and t and they were shopping, and I don't know who'd get credit for this. <laughs> Tom's panicked now. He's trying to figure out. Right. Up on screen, two yeah. things, www.bbt.com. Please check that out, www.nmar.com and all the great things that these two fine institutions do. Guys, I'm really proud of what you're doing, and thanks for looking after everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll be right back. Well, back now on Try Today, I'm holding up one of the many types of uh, Girl Scout cookies. We showed them to you a couple weeks ago when the round table ate theirs voraciously, Thin Mints and all the others. Anyway, this time we actually have Girl Scouts with us. Let's meet them right now. Next to me is a lifelong Girl Scout. And a great leader. Molly Miller is outside recruitment manager for Girl Scouts Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont. Next to her, London Griffin, a Girl Scout Brownie. And next to her, Bonnie Jo Taylor, a Girl Scout Cadet. Welcome, ladies. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you. I'm going to talk with the girls in just a second, but first, uh, the older girls. Is that all right for me to say that? Um, <laughs> now, seriously, remind us what the mission of Girl Scouts is and what areas you serve. The mission of Girl Scouts is to build women of courage, confidence, and character who will make the world a better place. <laughs> And on that theme, uh, we talk about this is the season for cookie sales, but really cookie sales are about much more than cookie sales, right? Yes, absolutely. So the cookie sales actually teach the girls five very important skills, um, which I would actually turn to the girls and ask to help me tell them about. So ladies. Oh, you know what, the, what, the, what, the, what it's all about. They who do. Wants, yes, who they wants to go do. first? All right, let's go to the outside here, and, and uh, Bonnie Joe, you start. Well, uh, three of the five of them are um, business ethics, personal um, skills, and um, decision making. Is that correct? Very good. All right. You got two more for us, London? Mm hmm What? People skills and money management. People Very skills good. and money management. I'm having trouble with both of those sometimes. Very good. The, uh, well, that's great. Now, the proceeds from cookie sales, very quickly, Molly, now where, yes. where would that go? I think people are always interested in where the money go when they, when they buy their cookies. Of course. So besides the amount of money that, of course, has to pay for the product itself, 100% of the proceeds go back to the girls. I just think that's great. Now, Richard, our director, I want to see uh, the two uh, young girls here for a second. I want to ask them the same questions. And I'll start with London. How old are you and what school do you go to? I go to Cash Elementary and I'm seven years old. Seven years old. And, mm -hmm. and Bonnie? I'm Bonnie 13 goes. years old. I'm in the seventh grade and I currently attend North Davie Middle School. All right, now here's a question for both of you. Why did you want to get involved in Girl Scouting? Let's start with London. Because I get a lot of patches. A lot of patches. I've had those on my skin before, but that's a whole nother, they'll heal up. Now what, now this is, now what kind of patches do you like to get? I like to get like roller skating patches and stuff like um, different kinds of patches. A lot of fun stuff. Yeah. What, what about you, Bonnie Jo? Why do you like getting involved with Girl Scouting? Well, I like being in Girl Scouts because I get to spend a lot more time with my friends than I normally would. Our once a month meetings allow me to see them quite often. And um, one of my favorite things is the annual World Thinking Day, where we get to uh, be a country and sponsor a country for a day and um, dress like that country and bring foods from that country and teach wow. others about the country. that's pretty neat. So there's a lot, of, Molly, there's a lot of activities that the girls can share. Again, it's not just selling cookies once a year. It's like stuff is going on all year round, right? Absolutely. Like a camp and other things? Yes, we have three camps that serve the 40 counties that we serve in the north and western area of North Carolina. And the girls can go during the summer and other times of the year. We have things going on all the time. We do things like dad and I camps or mom and I camps or camps of high adventure Isn't that or neat? different skills the girls can learn. Anything from not tying all the way through car mechanic care. That's, that's just great. Bonnie Joe, what do you have you thought about what career you want to go into someday? Um, I would like to be a geneticist whenever I grow a up. A geneticist? So. Yes, sir. Wow. And studying what, DNA and all that stuff? Yes, sir. Wow. What about you, London? Have you thought about what you want to be when you grow up? Well, I would like to be a Girl Scout troop leader. A troop leader? Well, there's no better thing than that. I just think that's great. Ladies, it's so neat. And, and, and thanks for all you do, Molly, for, for overseeing this. And, and, and girls, I'm so glad you could be with us. I want to do something here. I want to put up on screen uh, something where people can get more information about what these great girls do. That's www dot girlscoutsp2p.org, stands for Carolina's Peaks to Piedmont. I'm going to say it again for the radio listening audience, girlscoutsp2p.org. Please check that out. Please support them by buying cookies. And please, if, if you have, if you have a, a child, 
this is a great organization to be a part of, and the website will tell you how you can get involved and get signed up. So to Molly and Bonnie Joe in London, thanks for being here. Thank you so much Thank for having and us. And good luck Thank with you. geneticism and being a troop leader. All right. We'll be right back after this. Back now on Tried Today, just about time for the round table and a quick shout out to our director and audio guy because we're switching around. Lori Bates is out today, so Richard Smith is filling in directing. Thomas Cormier will do audio, so thanks guys and be good to us in there. Now, to introduce the panel on my right, but always the political left, Ogie Overman, the great win award winning broadcaster journalist. Next to him is a world traveler who just got <laughs> back from Egypt. We call her Cleopatra Dudley uh, Ogie. <laughs> Uh, president of the Dudley Beauty Products, and next to her, uh, Keith Granberry, who uh, golfs with President Trump every day, uh, <laughs> founder, founder of Helping Hands Consultants. All right, guys and gals, a federal judge has ruled that the government cannot, cannot ask about citizenship status when they're conducting the upcoming 2020 census. Here's my question. Why isn't it okay to ask someone on a census whether they're a citizen? Ogie. For one thing, it's nothing but a Republican ploy to intimidate undocumented people. And it's, most importantly, it's not a citizenship test. It's a head count. It's a resident head count, period. That's all it's for. But Ursula, I want to know about uh, gender. I want to know about race. I want to know about do you have children in the home? Why should I know if you're a citizen? Well, I think because you've got a number of people who are documented, but you know maybe they don't have their citizenship uh, yet. So you know, for them, I think sometimes it's a deterrent if you ask them because they're scared that ISIS might come. I mean, not uh, not ISIS. Lord have mercy. Well, you don't know. Lord. Could, <laughs> ISIS could be in with ICE. <laughs> yeah, you don't right. know. But ICE might come and get them. So you know, we've got hey, to be careful. Well, I think there are several reasons. I think you will dilute the numbers if you ask about citizenship mm, because people really? are not going to come forward if they have some undocumented uh, relatives and they're not going to get But if there were no threat, do you agree that but we there, should know that? But there is a threat. We can't even say what if because we know there's a threat as long as this administration is in. It's a real threat. Suppose this were under the Obama administration. Will Still we, would be a threat because he did, he, he, he deported. deported a lot of people. Mm -hmm. All right, Congresswoman Virginia Fox has introduced a bill to deny federal grants to Planned Parenthood or any other organization that performs abortions. Are you okay with Fox's proposed legislation, Ogie? I think it's criminal what that woman is doing. Uh, not only that, but all the good things that Planned Parenthood does and she yeah. wants to make it <clears throat> to where future administrations cannot fund plant care. Can't change it. And that'll get struck down immediately. Ursula. A a absolutely not. I mean, as long as we have Roe v. Wade and abortion is legal, I think that uh, we should uh, give federal grants to all types of organizations that help us um, you know, promote the laws of the United States of America. A lot of education involved with that absolutely. Planned Parenthood. Keith. This is why voting is so important. Mm -hmm. Women should look at this and look at how their lives can be affected by one politician. Mm -hmm. It's wrong what she's doing and people should recognize that and vote for someone who will uphold the laws. All right, let's talk about another woman. Vice President Mike Pence's wife, Karen, is returning to teaching at a school, no less, that bars students, teachers, and parents who are gay or lesbian. The Vice President says the media shouldn't criticize Christian education. Any thoughts on this, guys and gals, or could this hurt Trump and Pence's reelection chances, or what? What are your thoughts? Well, on? it just makes blood spew out of my ears again, Jim. I have three gay minister friends. To say this is Christian just makes me crazy. Yeah. And I don't think Pence will even be the nominee. Uh, All right. Even if Trump went away, you don't think Pence will no, be the nominee? No, they'll primary right. him Personally. and get rid of him. Yeah, I don't think it's going to affect their election chances. I, I just think it's a shame because, you know, Christianity, Christianity teaches us to love one another. Uh, and I think that that's just, you know, wrong and unfair. Love one another and not exclude one another. Absolutely. Keith. I think this is part of Pence's plan. Uh, because he is he is looking at the evangelicals, he's trying to woo them to be the president. Because he doesn't think that Donald Trump will do another term. I think Speak, that's what this is. Well, you could be right. Speaking of politics, uh, Senator Kamala Harris from California, my pick. Uh, there, I'm, I'm out front with it now. I'm picking her. Um, and uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand from New York have both said they're running for president in 2020. Okay, do either of these ladies stand a chance of getting their own nomination? And if they do, could they beat Trump? Thoughts on this, Ogie? Well, yeah, I think any, at this, it's so early now, anybody could stand a chance, and it could be somebody who's not even in the race yet. That Mayor of Gary, Indiana could emerge, or wherever he's from. Uh, so you don't know And yet. I think whoever the Democrat is, let's keep our eye on the prize and pick the candidate who can beat Trump. Ursula. 
I mean, I think it shows that it's time for some new blood. Um, I think we, we need new people with new ideas to come in and, and really show us that um, you know, they can make some changes that are going to be good for the United States of America. Well, so far, four women, including, and that also includes Senator Elizabeth Warren and uh, Representative uh, Tulsi Gabbard out of Hawaii, mm -hmm. four women. Will a woman break the glass ceiling, the, the presidential glass ceiling in 2020? I can only hope and pray. We'll All see. right, Keith. I think number one, you can never underestimate President Trump. I, I just don't. I don't think people should should do that. Uh, the first thing is that I think uh, Senator Harris is running for president, uh, technically, but I think for all intents and purposes, she's actually eyeing the vice president's Kamala uh, Harris. Nomin yeah, I think I, that's what I believe. I believe that she is getting her name out there, getting national recognition to be the vice president candidate for. Joe Biden. <clears throat> All right. How, uh, <clears throat> speaking of candidates for president, Brian, uh, how much time? Well, one minute? All right. Uh, it has been reported that gift shops in North Carolina are starting to phase out the sale of Confederate flags and caps, which kids for 70 years have gone. Little boys have gotten caps and flags. Very quickly, guys and gals, you okay with phasing it out, Ogie? They should have phased it out 20, 30, 40 years Ursula. ago. Great. Phase it out. Keith. Absolutely, positively. I used to wear one of those, but you know, look at me. Now we know what. Now we. Now we. You know didn't know wrong. any better. Yeah. Now we know what's wrong with me. Uh, finally, yeah. Finally, last week, two women climbed atop a moving car on I-64 in St. Louis, began twerking. Guys and gals, the definition of that is when you dance and thrust <clears> your <throat> hips and everything. Uh, have you ever twerked? And would you twerk on a moving car, Ogie? Ogie don't twerk. Ogie shags. Ogie yeah, don't twerk. Ursula. Not not on a moving car. Keith. If you see a man twerking, <laughs> then there's a problem. It won't yeah. be you. It if you see you. a man twerking, there is a problem. All right. got worse well, that's all the time. That's all the time we have from twerking central. Oh, except for this. Scientists have discovered a remote province in China where women make all the laws and tell men exactly what to do. Hey, I know that province. It's called my house. <laughs> for all of us here on Try Today, I'm Jim Longworth.